for an investor expecting the federal funds rate to fall, which of the following investments would be most appropriate? So this requires a little bit of knowledge here you know, about chapter three, about some of the different uh, you know, fixed income securities. Give people uh, a minute here. And by the way, if you're not sure, if you're not sure, Good opportunity to just guess, right? If you don't get it right now, you know, it, it's not going to hurt you uh, come exam time. You know, participating, guessing, uh, that is going to, it's going to stick with you uh, even if you get it wrong. So I encourage people, even if they're not sure, to, to, to put their best foot forward here. So the best answer for this one, the best answer for this one is going to be C. Best answer for this one is going to be C. This one's a little bit nasty. So let's kind of break it down a little. So federal funds rate. For this question, Fed funds rate, the best way to think about that, that is just an interest rate. So they're basically telling you interest rates are falling. And if interest rates are falling, what do we know about bond prices? Well, keep in mind that inverse relationship. As interest rates are going down, bond prices are going up. Rates are going down, prices are going up. So what they're asking you, essentially, to word this question a little bit differently, which type of bond is going to increase the most as interest rates fall? So which one is going to increase the most as rates fall? And if you think about it here, there's, there's two key factors that make a bond more sensitive to changing rates. Does anyone remember what those key factors are? What makes bonds more sensitive or more volatile to changing rates? Arden, good answer. interest rate risk. So we are talking a little bit about interest rate risk here. My question is to dive a little deeper. What type of bonds specifically um, are more susceptible to interest rate risk? And the key thing, so to break it down here, which kind of bonds are going to be more volatile? Long-term bonds and low-coupon bonds. Long-term low coupon bonds, including zeros, would be the most volatile. So if you think about the different treasuries, well, which of these three treasuries is going to have the, which of these three treasuries is going to have the lower, the, the, the longest term, the longest term? Well, treasury bonds, remember, are 30 years, right? 30 years, while well, notes are between two to 10 years, bills are a year or less. And because treasury bonds are the longest term, they're gonna be the most volatile. And as rates fall, because they're the most volatile, they're gonna increase the most in price. Question came up in the chat about the Fed funds rate. So the Fed funds rate is the rate that banks charge one another for overnight loans. So it's the rate that banks charge one another for overnight loans. For a question like this, think about it just as a proxy for interest rates in the market. You can assume that the Fed funds rate is declining, other rates would also be declining and vice versa. So that's the best way to kind of think about it here. One more follow-up question, commercial paper. Commercial paper is an example of a money market security. Does anyone remember the maximum maturity of commercial paper? It's a good testable point to know for the exam. Nice job, Chris. Nice job, Arden. Nice job, Lisa. 
And by the way, I apologize if I'm uh, butchering anyone's name, feel free to correct me on the chat. So for commercial paper, 270 days. 270 days is the maximum mature. Why 270 days, by the way? Because if it's 270 days or less, it's an exempt security. It doesn't have to be SEC registered. So 270 days, that's a good day count to count.